All right, today we're going to look at the second Christmas story of the uh, Christmas cast. Uh, yeah. We finished fourth. Now the first one again was... We're looking at the uh, character of Jesus and... Uh, yeah. So... So first we looked at uh, Zechariah. First he was kind of negative and then became a, uh, a prophet. So you remember that he was first a pessimist, but then through the process uh, became uh, the prophet. He said, you know, these things are impossible, this can't be. God laughed and said, please. So next, who did we look at? We looked at Mary, was distressed and then became delighted. Next, who did we look at? We looked, looked at Joseph. Who was Joseph? Joseph was awkward. And then, it was kind of an awkward situation for him. His wife was pregnant. And then God reminded him that he was to get married. And, uh, and last week, we looked at the shepherd. Who was that? Who were the shepherds? They were panicked and then became the preacher's. Now today we're going to look at two. Is everyone ready? First, looked at Simeon. Simeon was a senior citizen, if you will, and became part of the saved. We don't know a lot about Simeon, very, very small um, information there. It's about uh, 12 verses, that's it. Information about his life before, his background, we, we really have nothing about that. So who was he? So let me give you some information about Simeon. So we find in Luke chapter 2... If you have your Bibles, go ahead and open there to Luke chapter 2. We're going to look at verses 22 through 24. We're going to go through it uh, all at once, and then we'll go back and hit some of the highlights. So in the days of her purification, we're talking about Mary here, according to the law of Moses, were accomplished. They brought him, who's him? Jesus, right? To Jerusalem. <coughs> to 
present him to the Lord, as is written in the law of the Lord. As is written in the law of the Lord, every male sh that openeth the womb shall be called holy unto the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice according to that which was said in the law of the Lord. A pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. On the twelfth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me two turtle doves. Does anyone know where they got that from? Right here in Luke chapter 2. Ta-da! And two young pigeons. Okay, so now... Let me explain the background uh, and the history of some of this. In Leviticus chapter, there's the chapter on purification. Anyway, to become, so once someone was dirty, they had to have a certain amount of time before they could become clean. It's like, seven days or something like that or something could become unclean if you uh, were sitting on a chair or whatever then you could become unclean but with birth the woman had to wait for 40 days before she could go out in public that was one of the rules 80 days if if a girl was born, that would be 80 days, but after a boy is born, only 40 days. So when I die, I'm going to go ask God, so what's up with the difference here? And so what happened, the woman gave birth and had to wait 40 days. And then the woman made a trip to Jerusalem. Why Jerusalem? The temple was there in Jerusalem. And that's where the sacrifices were made. <coughs> By the time the second temple came around, the first temple of Solomon was destroyed, and Ezra came back and rebuilt the temple. Some renovations were made uh, before that, but uh, bigger and uh, more glorious thing, probably about a 8025, 80, 8070, uh, it was destroyed again under, not under Pilate, I'm sorry, under Herod. They renovated the temple and they called it Herod's temple at that time. So that was kind of the third temple, but still really it's the same. Um, they made some bigger renovations there. That happened later, but anyway, for today, the temple they went to in Jerusalem to make the offering. Basically, they were going to dedicate the baby to the Lord. The Lord required them to dedicate their baby to the Lord, and so they brought their son to, uh, to the Lord, and and ha Hannah offered. Hannah offered what? As uh, Hannah offered Samuel and dedicated him to the Lord, um, so we're going to teach that and make them fall, make him follow the Lord, and help encourage them. So anyway, all of that happened. Uh, when Jesus was still a baby. Maybe a month and a half, they went to uh, Jerusalem, uh, to the temple. I want you to imagine with me, Joseph and Mary, they lived in 
toward Jerusalem at the time. We don't know where they lived at the, at the time. We know that Jesus was born in, in, in a manger in Bethlehem, but after that, where do they live? We're not entirely sure. They stayed in Bethlehem probably at an Airbnb or something like that. Uh, anyway. Oh, in, in the stable there. But, but it was a cheap place. It was for free. It was, the price was right. I'm teasing a little bit, but it is possible that they lived there uh, a little while. It's possible that they did rent a room in, in Bethlehem, but it's possible they had a, a personal house, but later, next week, we'll, next week we see that they lived in a house, but what kind of house? Um, another person's house, we don't know. There's very little information there uh, in the passage. But they traveled to, to the city, to Jerusalem, one or two day trip. It wasn't very far, but they could walk it. to make the offering for uh, the baby at the temple. Now they arrived at the temple and entered the courts, and what happened? There was a man in Jerusalem named Simeon. It's not the same as Simon, but it's a very similar name, but really it means the same. Sometimes the name Simeon is changed to Simon uh, in the Bible, but what kind of guy was uh, Simeon? The Bible tells us he was just. What, what, do we, what do we mean when we say just? He followed the law. He's a righteous person and devoted, devout. It means he was faithful. The word devout means faithful. He continued to go whatever it was that God called him to do. He did it. So he was waiting for the consolation. What does this word consolation mean? It means mercy of Israel. Now this phrase for the consolation of Israel, what, is, what does this phrase mean? Now wasn't that name specifically, that's what I'm looking for, the Messiah, they were looking for Messiah. Yes, Jesus will be Messiah, but, that, but they didn't know his name. The coming of the Lord, yes, specifically the anointed one, the Messiah, is who they were waiting for. And I want you to notice the Holy Ghost was upon him. Before in the Old Testament, the Holy Ghost was on a prophet. I don't have time to explain all of that, how that happened. Saul, David, they experienced, a few others experienced, experienced the Holy Ghost on them. The same happened here, is that the Holy Ghost was on Simeon. It was not an angel, but it was the Holy Ghost that was on him. He will not die until he sees the Lord's Christ. Typically, we, we sign Jesus Christ. You've seen this. Really, there's two different and separate there's Jesus, the Christ. Why do we add this title, the Christ? It means 
the Messiah. It is, it's a, the same meaning. It's the anointed one is what it really means. Christ and Messiah means the same thing. It is the promise that God gave to David and to Adam. The one. The Messiah, Jesus Christ. So Simeon was faithful and he... So he was in service to the Lord for years and God promised him that he would not die until he saw the Messiah. <sighs> Simeon asked God, how do I know which one is which? If you can imagine this conversation, he goes to the temple, It doesn't tell us exactly how long he was there waiting. I wonder if he woke up every day wondering if he got dressed and went to the temple, if he was going to see uh, the Messiah that day. Looking at all the people coming into the temple who have a baby and he's looking and is this the one? Nope, not that one. Sees another couple coming in with their baby looks to God and says, is that the one? Nope, not that one. Another one with a baby. Ah, oh, it's a baby girl. Okay, who's another one? Coming, looking. Nope, not that one. And then he goes home. Next day he wakes up, goes to the temple. Again, looks. Let me see your baby. Nope, not that one. Let me see your baby. He takes a look. Nope, not that one. Go back home again. Goes to sleep, wakes up. Maybe goes to the temple again. Nope. Goes home, goes to bed. Next day, wake up. Maybe goes again to the temple. Goes to bed, wakes up. Gets dressed again, goes to the temple. And over and over again, Simeon does this. Do you think he'd get tired of this? No way. He does not. I will see the Messiah. It was the promise for over a thousand years. No one had seen the Messiah before. No one's going to see the Messiah before me. I'm going to see the Messiah before I die. That means every day I'm going to get up out of bed, I'm going to go to the temple, and I'm going to watch. You think he missed a day? I highly doubt it. That was Simeon. So the, it happened one day, Simeon came to the temple by the Spirit. He said, don't miss this day. Simeon was ready. He got up and took off, went to the temple. And he looks around and sees this couple coming up. And they brought their child Jesus. And Simeon said, let me, let me see this baby. And Mary said, no, <laughs> go away, you creep. Stranger danger. No way, go away. This is my baby. He says, let me see your baby. So Mary shows him the baby, and he takes up the baby, and he praises God. Finally, the day has come. I imagined, I imagine the people in the temple seeing this old man has gone crazy, shouting in the middle of the temple. Do people do that as a general rule? No, they don't. This guy must be crazy. Some strange old man there in the middle of the temple shouting at the top of his lungs and blessing this baby. <coughs> Was thinking to himself, maybe tomorrow is going to die. But anyway, the Lord uh, blessed him and now 
and now he can die in peace. He says, fine, because I finally have seen your word come true. I'm happy that the Lord has kept his promise. Every day he went to the temple and finally saw success and God blessed him by showing him the Messiah. He got to hold the baby and see the Messiah himself and the joy. And he says, now I'm ready to die. I'm ready to go. I have no God has the power on earth. My eyes have seen, notice this word here, salvation. which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. A light to lighten for only the Jews. Not only for the Jews, this old man holding this baby says you will be a light to the Greeks as well, to the Gentiles. The others in the temple are looking at him saying blasphemy. He's talking about the Gentiles here in the holy temple. Go outside and Solomon said that the, the, the Gentiles are outside. We're not going to speak of them inside here. But Joseph and Mary were confused by this they marveled at the things that were spoken of him. Mary and Joseph stood in awe of what Simeon said about their baby Jesus. Mary and Joseph knew who their baby was. They knew that he was the Messiah. The second shepherd had told them that in, um, in the room when they, where they gave birth. And the shepherd told me to come see a baby. And, and Mary, and they all, and that Mary kept that in the back of her mind and molded over and wondered. Now, likewise, Joseph saw this and he was amazed also. So Simeon had blessed you, said, bless you, Mary. This child is set for the fall and rising of, again of many in Israel. And for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yea, a sword will, shall pierce through your own soul also that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. That is not the best news. We go to the baby shower, everyone shows up, and there's a party, playing games, and then one of the old men stands up and tells you that it's going to hurt you too. Good job. And then takes off. That information about Mary, that it will hurt you as well. But he will be great. I'm sure Joseph and Mary were pierced to the heart. And Mary's was thinking, how's my baby? Could, she was thinking, well, can I just have my baby back now, please? I don't know. Maybe she thought that. We don't know. But <coughs> Simeon was an old man and became saved. 
child was the Savior. I'm sure he knew in his mind that there was no one like this child. He was the Savior, the Messiah. We don't know. This might have been the first conversion, but it would be pretty cool if that was, uh, if you think about it. So first we talked about Simeon. You remember today we have two. This one's for free. So first we talked about Simeon. Now we're talking about Anna. She was a widow and became a witness. At that moment, and there was one Anna She was a prophet. Now, in the Bible, we know of only one or two, nine or, nine or ten prophets, nine or ten prophets who are women in the whole Bible. We have Anna here. We have, in the Old Testament, we have Deborah, also uh, one of the judges, and then there's one more, I can't remember the name. But Anna herself was a prophet, the child of Samuel. Faneuil. Oh, Faneuil. Child, daughter of Faneuil. The tribe of Acer, she was of great age and had lived with her husband seven years. Let's do the math for a second. She lived with her husband for seven, seven years and then she died and she was a widow for four score and four years. 84 plus seven means she was 91 plus how old was we how old was when she when she got married maybe 13 not before 13 but maybe 16 18 we don't know the earliest possible marriage time for women was about 13 at that that time The lowest possible number would be about 13. Probably older than that. 13 plus 91, she would be at least... ...104. Is that my math right? <laughs> God's math is better than mine. 104. At all this, possibly 110. Very possible. 110 year old woman. Simeon is praising God for the baby Jesus and to bless the parents. And this old woman of 110 years old can't imagine entering the scene and. Winnow had never left the temple. She lived there at the temple. 
What did that look like? I'm not sure. She prayed and served God with fasting, with prayer, uh, all day and all night. And she's 110 years old. What else did she do? Sat at the temple and prayed and... Recently I talked with... Um, So someone said that the uh, older folks really don't really need a lot of sleep. And this woman, maybe she didn't sleep much. Maybe she slept a little bit and prayed, woke up again and prayed again. Like a little cat naps, maybe. We don't know. But she's there in the temple, praying, fasting, serving the Lord. And the Bible says, and she was coming in that instant, Gave thanks likewise to the Lord. <laughs> and gave God thanks and let everybody know that you know that this person, this baby here is the Messiah. She went around to everybody. Did you know this is the Messiah? Hey, everyone, this is the Messiah. She went to the other side of the temple and again said, hey, this is Messiah. Look, the Messiah's over here. The Savior, the Savior, he's here now. Look. For the redemption in Israel. I'm sure people remember that day in the temple. Two old crazy people in the temple, the middle of the temple, screaming at the top of their lungs, giving praise to God. And the old woman <coughs> running around, running her mouth. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the scene, the commotion of everyone running around, wondering in the temple... And Joseph, there with the baby, in amazement at the scene. This really and truly happened. We have Anna and Simeon that we've talked about today. and I'm going to make some very simple application because... <laughs> I'm not Simeon, I'm not Anna. So how do we, comp how do we apply this to uh, ourselves? I'm young, you know, I'm 30-something years old. and We can still apply this to our lives, you know, right? There was no relationship between Simeon and Anna. They weren't boyfriend, girlfriend. There was no connection. They knew each other, yes. Anna was always in the temple all the time, and Simeon went daily to the temple, and they knew each other, of course. They might have been friends, too, there, but there's no uh, specific relationship there. The first um, application, are you old? Most will admit, <laughs> some refuse to admit that they're old, yes, but it doesn't matter your age, whether young or old, God has a plan for you. God still wants to use you. Can you imagine... <coughs> Simeon, imagine if Simeon or Anna didn't 
fast or pray. Imagine if imagine if they hadn't been doing what they had been doing and missed the opportunity and wondered what had happened. God wants to use you. It doesn't matter your age. Number two, do you believe that Jesus is the Christ and offers salvation. Because Simeon said, this baby is the Messiah. He is the salvation. I challenge and encourage you that this is true. I want you to have salvation through Jesus Christ. If you haven't yet uh, taking the step of belief and faith, I encourage you to do that. Number two, number three, are you still faithful at your age? Are you devout? I love that word, devout. I encourage you, especially to become, as you become old, be faithful. Be like Simeon. Be like Anna. And be faithful to the Lord. We have a lot of faithful people here at this church. There are many with many years and they are still faithful. Even when they miss a day, they come and they apologize and say, you know, it's okay. You need to be faithful. I need you to be faithful. I cherish you and I can't do this alone. We need to do this together. Fourth, are you telling others about Christ? If Anna at 110 was faithful, you can share and be faithful. But they might think I'm crazy. <coughs> yes, they will. I imagine the people that day looking around, crazy old bird. Anna's off her medicine again. I, I don't know what, what's going on with her, but... Anna told other people about her hope, the Messiah, the Redeemer. Salvation is here. Come look. Take a look. Come on, we can do the same thing. If even Anna can walk around the temple sharing with others uh, what has happened with the people about her Christ without shame, If the, if the sportscaster on um, national television, on national TV, is talking with the, the people uh, on the camera and who's talking about prayer, I want, right, I want to pray right now. God be with the man who, whose heart was hurt. Uh, pray on, on air to God and ask him on live national television that was definitely bold I wonder if I have the guts to do that I wonder we should 
I'd be afraid I'd lose my job. But he did it anyway. Did he get punished for his righteousness? Well, we don't know. He did it at any cost. That's where we talk about counting the cost. Was it worth it? Yeah. It was worth it. Do it. Just do that. We share our faith with other people. We can do that. I encourage you. Do that. Let me close with prayer. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for uh, the story of your birth, the story of Simeon and Anna, two old folks who admit that they were still faithful. It might look a little crazy or a little mad. But still, we will do it because we believe in you. Lord, bless us and allow us to be bold. We want, we want that boldness. to be strong and to be faithful and to share with other people. We can do that. We can stand firm and share our faith with other people. It's not enough to just say, I'm, I'm a Christian or I believe. I believe in Jesus Christ's death and resurrection and salvation from sin. In our souls, we need to do that more. We know we need to do that more. This Savior, this Redeemer of Israel, the Messiah, doesn't care what we think. I know that I'm going to stand because the Lord will give me strength. doesn't matter our age. We can continue our service to the Lord and be faithful to Him no matter what. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.